Hello and welcome back to another episode of Battletech. This is the Swan Song campaign. My name is Saiken and then today we're continuing the campaign where we're trying to beat the game on the literal hardest difficulty. Everything cranked up to the maximum and it is time for Prototype 4, which is the fourth installment of our first Flashpoint. Today we're going to go into a mission with Preset Max. Hogbite is the only character that is going to kind of rejoin that uh, uh, that mission. Conqueror, Scanter and Purgatrine are all three characters of different houses. They kind of, after we uh, have beaten them, uh, decided to join up with us and they are now running their standard mechs. The good news here is that uh, Conqueror as a pilot is experienced, has the ability to cool and multi-shot. The uh, Scatcher has uh, sure footing, bulwark, so it's a lot of defensive abilities. The trebuchet is good for that. Griffin is another uh, great uh, medium-sized mech. And we got uh, Peregrine, uh, Peregrine, who is going to be kind of a scout with the Javelin. Also has multi-shot, also has sure footing to not be uh, knocked down and has the jump ability for quad medium lasers means he's sort of a brawler just in a small chassis we got a ppc and lrm tens uh, so the griffin will be our long range missile battery a bit of a waste uh, to then give him bulwark but whatever it is what it is commander um, this casher is a brawler uh, with uh, medium lasers but with the two lrm 15s also quite good on uh, the uh, defense uh, on the ranged portion and hogbite is riding the uh, mech that i really want to salvage for us the raven the raven is a cool mech uh, not uh, necessarily because it packs such a huge punch it's actually quite moderate in that detail uh, in that detail two medium lasers and an srm6 are around Give and take 100 uh, damage on in short distance but we do have this um, force field around us which essentially will prevent us from being spotted out and that is usually something the uh, mm, uh, the uh, emp generator or uh, what's it yeah probing generator uh, that is installed i forgot the name of uh, the actual Oh yeah, here it is. ECM carrier module is normally one that is only available in assault mechs or you can find it and then uh, build it into uh, the mechs, but it is incredibly useful. The way that it works is unless the enemies do have sensor lock, none of the uh, mechs that we do have that stand within uh, the uh, proximity can be spotted out. Problem is we're going to fight against quite a few towers here so we got a lot of lrm towers that are sitting around here and the moment that we're getting too close i can tell you out of experience that this mission here is prone to fail so what we're going to do is i intend to kind of move alongside this corridor here and just keep almost completely out of range in the hopes of yeah, moving around and kind of picking a back entrance. Affirmative. Good. Next are moving up. Confirmed. If we already start to encounter someone, we do not. Problem is as long as we're not in combat. We cannot destroy the buildings here and without the buildings destroyed we cannot really move further so i might take the road and just uh, move back from here so careful movement this will very soon trigger someone yeah there's the enemy contact i was being afraid of but we got a lot of evasive blips so we should be fine the problem with this mission on hard difficulty is that you're ending up against a lot of enemies. And whilst you can take down some of them, typically 
you end up uh, being overrun. So we're moving the Raven. Yes, Commander. Acknowledged. And we're moving everyone else in an attempt to sprint. Standing by. What would be super helpful is if we had the option to Heading out. actually sensor lock some of uh, them because we do have uh, quite a few long range weapons and using them uh, against the sensor lock target would be fantastic but i think Confirmed. yeah we're okay the trebuchet we could uh, work with that so we're continuing to just delay under really until the attack. end and currently we only have a trebuchet it could not attack because for we were hidden and this is where the beauty of uh, the whole Awaiting orders the whole uh, build with the raven starts to kick in so let's jump i want to be careful I mean, we can jump up here outside of uh, the distortion field. Which is probably not the worst idea. We get the height bonus and that'll be 80% chance to hit. That's okay, the javelin can tank a shot or two. In all weapon systems. Good. Trebuchet takes a nice little hit. We're going to be retaliated upon. As I mentioned quite a few long-range missiles once you have taken your shot you are out in the open they can attack you got something you want done good we got a ppc and an lrm here so if we move far enough away we should be okay looking for the high ground can't fully find it i think we're going to stay here for now just getting uh just getting the blips up the evasion blips and let's hit the trebuchet Uh, that is unfortunate. I was not expecting so much damage uh, to happen on the building. We're now uh, being damaged on both of the legs. So I'll offer a different target. Both of them are on the other side, so we could move all the way to here. Commander. Moving to position. Trebuchet is still Inside. taking some damage. No major hits yet. Oh boy. Losing armor. Oh, All right, that is a problem. I'm hit. Full throttle. And although we're taking less damage just due to uh, being in the runes. You can see just how many hits are coming in. Good. Trebuchet is starting to... is starting to delay. And that's okay. Continues to further delay. We could take an entire turn 
and then yeah. let it take its turn. Standing up. We need to get out of the range. I'm up. Let's go. But how would that work? That's only a 50% shot. But I think we can, could do it. Let's hit the trebuchet. It's trying to get its arm off. Ready to get it on. All right, got the high ground here, which will make for a perfect sniping position. You can see we're lacking damage. The trebuchet is still standing. And that's a bit the problem of all of uh, the mechs that we're currently running. They are just not dealing enough damage. Three blips and... On the move. Three blips and we got uh, um, further damage reduction by being in the runes. That counts almost as if it would be... It's actually the exact same thing as wood, as forest. Firing all weapons. That was a really solid hit. Go to critical hit. Good and hogbite. I would just reserve for now because the raven is incredibly squishy. If it starts getting hit, things are usually not turning out very well. For now, I think we're fairly far away. I don't have vigilance, so we cannot just stand there. So instead, uh, let's move over here and we're bracing. Typically, I don't like to waste turns, but I feel in this particular case, we want to make sure that the Raven doesn't get massively attacked. And with two blips plus Barely bulwark plus being here, that's minus 40% damage on the trebuchet. We're being in a good defensive position. Also, most of the towers seem to end sort of here, which means we can just stand here for now. We've not taken more damage. And that's good. That's reserve. Ready for orders. All right, Griffin. We're using cooling vent. Just to cool us down. And let's hit this guy. One hit point in the torso. That should be doable. Here it comes. There we go. Fantastic. Enemy down. Good. We're waiting for them to come a bit closer. Another trebuchet. Interesting. Yes, Commander. I'm here. Uh, the javelin has taken too much damage. Raven doesn't have the necessary range. We could move up to here, but that would almost provoke too much of a counter reaction. Instead, let's move to here. Moving out. And let's use vigilance for even further reduction. So we're now at 60% damage reduction against things that are coming in. Medium lasers, not far enough. Let's try this here. I 
We could active pro ping. That is an option to kind of see everyone else, but it's pointless because we don't have a lot of follow-up. So might as well just use the little offensive power that we have on the Raven. Interesting, the Raven still stays invisible. I wasn't aware that that was a thing. Good, we got an LRM carrier here. We're sure as hell going to focus that one. Highly damaged now. And yeah, we've now been officially sensor locked and the Raven will take the heat of uh, at least one tower. Nope, two. And you can see just how fragile it is, right? Good. Let's continue on reserve. Good to go. Our sniper up here. Got some multi shot. Might as well do that. So we're hitting the trebuchet in order to reduce its sensors, and the LRM could die with just uh, one salvo out of our LRM. That's a hit, and the sensors are impaired. I didn't fully kill it, but that's okay. We can still manage to get by. Careful with not moving too far. I'm here. I like the idea of still staying in the ruins, but I don't want to take the entire heat of the turrets hmm let's kill the L LRM carrier very good we're still continuing to stay hidden unless someone's moving in here and that someone could be the trebuchet so we want to prevent that from happening of course moving up Precision strike. Gotta get rid of one laser. Let's try to hit him. Affirmative. That's okay. Not really enough damage. I was hoping for a bit more. As for the javelin almost heated to the maximum so what i will do for now is cool it down and just give it one round of just staying there that's an srm carrier no another lrm carrier Yeah, and luckily we got that 20% uh, reduction. And here's a little trick, by the way. With the 20% reduction, the way that missiles work, LRMs are dealing four points of damage. And you can see that the Raven is only taking three points of damage. Instead of uh, having a percent um, reduction overall, every single object is being reduced. So that's why uh, MGs, for instance, and other like small uh, damage targets suffer the most if you have Bulwark or other abilities going. Continuing to hit the guy, almost got him down. Fantastic. Awaiting orders.
Javelin moves up. Four medium lasers. And we're brawling it down. Fantastic. Reporting. One less vehicle. Good. We got another trebuchet. Commander. Welcome. Our trebuchet moves over here. And we're unfortunately becoming too hot at this point and it's really not worth trying to finish him off Confirm. lots and lots and lots of stray shots which is good just in case if he wants to move into the building afterwards good moving up we're taking vigilance just in case I want the Raven to really be healthy. All weapons committed. Yeah, Trebuchet moves in. Takes a shot. But we had quite a few evasion blips going here. So that was fine. We're going to take two more missile salvos. That's one. So far, armor is holding. And thanks to our 20% damage reduction, essentially it's a 25% damage reduction against the missiles. Fantastic. Raven moves up. And we're taking an active shot against the trebuchet. It lost its arm. Javelin moves up and we are dealing some really solid damage here. Mission started slow, but it's gradually becoming better. Good. We can't really move out of here, so might as well attack. Let's see how you like this. Head up. And as a thank you, we're of course going to eat some missiles. He pins at us nicely here in the corner. Oh boy, we're taking quite a bit of damage. Orders. Javelin moves up. I copy. Target destroyed. And that's the destruction of the entire garrison. Good, we're in a decent shape. On my way. I've seen worse starts than that. I would say the first round with kind of being split and standing on top of the building was not optimal, but the rest was okay. Good, and now we can fully abuse the abilities of the Raven to just allow us to get closer and closer. I think another lance is coming in, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere over here. Good, and what we can do is either go forward and kill the towers or retract. And I don't want to be that guy, so...
We are moving forward. Raven moves up. Light LRM power needs to die. Oh, wow. Down to the hit point. Okay, fair enough. Position confirmed. Fantastic. Multi target. One and two. A copy. Very good. Power is almost down. Ready to get it on. What do we got? Light LRM power, light RM tower, oh boy. Good. So let's try to kill this tower and injure the other one really well. Fantastic. Confirmed. Good. Trebuchet is moving up. Unfortunately, we don't have multi shot. Two MGs, two LRMs. Same tower. We're saving some LRMs. Target locked. Good. Wanted to make sure that we're definitely getting three out of four towers. It down, Commander. So that means, besides the one tower, we got a decent position against whatever is coming, uh, coming from this way. Question of the day, can we reach the last uh, tower? We certainly can. Considering that we can also jump up here. Taking the high ground and let's get this tower down. Very good. Target eliminated. We got a bit of a heat problem with the javelin, but I think overall we should be fine. Let's reserve and let them come. All right, striker is moving up. That's fantastic. The striker sort of moves there in in the hopes of uh, actually revealing us. As a result, we're moving back. Recloaking. And let's also hit the striker. Good. They were trying to hit the javelin, but with five evasion dip, uh, blips, that's not going to work. Yes, Commander. But let's get the striker down, shall we? I think this here is sort of the best position. Hmm. The Locust has too many evasion blips. We could, of course, also just try to hit it. That's 
not going to deal enough damage. I would like to use all of our weapons, so... Awaiting orders. Yeah, no really good spot for them. Yeah, still not a hit. Okay, cool. Good. So that's the best position. Moving there with the trebuchet, keeping kind of that tight formation. And let's hit the side armor. There we go. There we go. Vehicle down. Fantastic. Waiting for order. I don't want to use our jump jets, but I think I have to. Because uh, the enemy has too many evasion blips. Confirm. Griffin moves up. And that's at least a 50-50. Let's hit this guy. Not optimal. They're trying to invade us with locusts. Good. Potentially the other locust, yep, is trying to spot us out. But we can counter that because when we're moving back, just like that, the remaining troops will stay concealed. Solid precision strike, and the locust takes some damage. Fantastic. Good. That means he's wasting his last turn. The ECM is so unbelievably strong if you use it correctly. Good. We're going to tank for a bit. Uh, one, two, three. And that's going to cook us. So it seems <laughs> overheating and removing one blip. Yeah, okay. I, we can do that. Not perfect. Slight damage, still okay. Good. We're taking a coolant. And we're continuing. I like to think we're going for the striker first. In order to do that, let's use uh, Viscasha here. Alright, for some reason I can't uh, select her. Which means we're going to go for the striker. By far the highest damage. Good to see the vehicle go. Awaiting orders. Still not far enough. That's about right. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to use a precision shot for that. Mainly because we need to cool down a bit more. Engaging target. We're almost out of uh, LRMs. One more hit and uh, one more LRM and we're completely out of LRMs. 
that's the problem with uh, missiles they tend to uh, they tend to last not very long Right, time for some melee attack. Engaging physical attack. I'm here. On my way. Good, we're just going to pull down. This locus is trying his hardest to evade i should have probably waited uh, because now he could have been detected in melee copy that fantastic reporting critical hit what up boss roger all right moving over let's try to get this locust here time for precision strike There we go. Target neutralized. Okay, one more enemy to go. And that that one is just barely trying to like? reveal us. Unfortunately, Hotbite Hot has armor. taken some damage. I was hoping that that wouldn't happen, which means he will be out of commission. Good, moving up. And that's the second leg gone. I think we're completely good to go. Oh no, we still need to destroy the facility. Sweet. Was there a, a turret left? I, I don't think so. All right. I'm reading heavy damage to an enemy structure. I think there is not even an enemy left. Splitting enemy structure eliminated. Fantastic. One less structure. Ready for orders. I copy. Copy that. Yes, Commander. Move order confirmed. Good, I think we don't have copy any that. more enemies here. Leopard inbound, Commander. I'll meet you at the LZ. Target destroyed. And that was solid, all things considered. A bit of a rocky start, but the rest of the mission went well. Good, look at that. We even got some extra bonus. 300,000 isn't bad. And we got a pretty solid Raven. Trebuchet on top of it. Can't fully salvage it, but maybe we'll get at least a second part. Nope, nope, no second part for you. Trebuchet would be good. That's a damn solid uh, medium mech, one of the better ones. But the Raven right, is certainly going to be a game changer for us because that allows for additional strategic prowess. The ECM, the AI usually cannot cope very well with the ECM and you can get away with more things than you normally could. Specifically, if you are having kind of moderate, uh, medium uh, range builds like we had.
Good. All three of them are mad that we're keeping it. No, we're not offering it. Keep the raven for yourself. Thank you. Because that is a pretty nice rare mech. And look at that. We got some extra juice here. Got a fire starter. Not that we would need that. Uh, we already got one, but it's nice to have another one. We got some lost tech. Nice time a small laser with uh, some extra accuracy. That is very very good lrm 15s with plus two damage means instead of four damage per missile we're looking at six damage per missile so for missile boat fantastic tts is a, an extra system for larger mechs typically targeting system if we go for a missile boat that will be helpful and we got 500,000 on top of it good so the Vulcan uh, goes right into our mech bay. And thankfully, we got a Raven. Got some good firepower here. Heat sinks. Here's the ECM field that I was talking about. The main problem with it is it's too squishy. So, I am considering, I know it stinks, but I will know that, that I'm going to be happier without it. Although, wait a second. So what we could do is heat things out. Still good. Let's maximize armor. Play around with the values a little bit. Not fantastic, but also not really bad. We just can't be caught from behind. Otherwise, the mag is going to uh, to implode. Hmm. 35 on both legs is a bit low. Twenty-five is always good because that means you can take a medium laser shot, so I tend to not go much below that. Thirty-five isn't fantastic either. But yeah, that loadout, just the changes with the heat sinks, is a tiny bit better. I think switching the SRM-6 for an SRM-4 maybe wouldn't be too bad. The ammunition is definitely at, in the wrong place, but it's fine for now. I just want to make sure we're not right. taking up any days. Because we might want to uh, to to use the Raven in an actual fight, and that brings us to our Mech Warriors. I think we still got four of our Mech Warriors ready. Yep, that is an entire lance available for us. Some extra health is helpful. Good, we're making some really nice progress here, getting that piloting and the gunnery up. Clearly Tygen needs some more gunnery experience, but he'll get that in our next mission. Hawkwright unfortunately is out again, yet another hit. Mox is out as well, which leaves us with Bradford to lead the team. That's fine, I got my full trust in you. John, don't disappoint me. 
So for our next mission, got a ship upgrade going. For our next mission, I, I mean the mech base uh, look quite battered. That's a small damage. That's a bit more moderate damage, and that's substantial damage. But we can still field it. We can still field it. It would be dangerous. I'll think about it until the next time to see if if it makes sense. Because the only mission I think that is worthwhile pursuing here is to work together with the pirates. Because this one here, well, that theoretically could work as well. It's not going to hurt us with the pirates. And the Free Worlds League so far has been an ally for us, kind of naturally developed into one. Unless, on the other hand, I mean, it's a fantastic mission. 28 salvage would solve all of our salvage problems. And it's quote unquote just a battle. So if we could, it's a bad biome for us because Badlands, oh, it's tough. Desert is <laughs> equally tough. But yeah, I, we could do it. It's three skulls, but we got the Raven now. And maybe it could be a solution, kind of wiggling our way out of uh, out of the difficult fights. Not a hundred percent a fan of it, but I'll think about it and see if it is uh, within our ability. Alternatively, just looking at the star map, I think we're ready to continue to travel afterwards. There's another flashpoint over here. Flashpoints are typically good, but two and a half uh, skulls looks like a bit too much. I think kind of one skull abandoned lunar world, not perfect. We have something with one and a half skulls in reach. That isn't bad either. I mean, 17 days is okay. 0 0.5 skulls, potentially not. And there are quite a few solar systems with two skulls. For instance, that one here. But I think, to be entirely honest, potentially this here would be the best choice for us for now like that one school maybe one and a half schools if we were to go to here desert world that's bad battlefield is okay because we get more loot and more scraps small population generally is not good because it also means a low number of missions The other worlds are potentially a bit too tough for us yet. There are few worlds down here. Like, how long would that take? 33 days? No, 29. Yeah, 10. We would waste 10 days just flying. It's not a bad, that's not a bad place, 26 days, but like I said, two and a half uh, schools is plentiful. What's, what could we do with one school? 28 days, that wouldn't be too bad. Might be something to consider, I love Arctic worlds. And there is pirate activity here, so it's good. That's not bad. It would be a tiny bit of a step back because we so far always have been kind of leveling up. But one school could also mean up to two and a half school missions. The problem that we're seeing in the uh, current solar systems uh, system that we uh, do have, I think we're in a one and a half. Uh, 
Well, no, we're in a three uh, school mission. Okay, scratch what I was about to say. I was uh, mentioning that, or I was trying to express that typically the missions kind of rotate around the difficulty level. So just because this here is uh, three school doesn't necessarily mean that you couldn't find almost a five school mission in here. And currently we just don't have the technology to deal with that. Anyways, uh, next time we are going to go on to that three school mission potentially and just see how it goes. If we get our ass kicked, we'll just uh, evac out. We got a bit of repair to do afterwards and just optimizing our remaining mechs. I uh, want to get the Vindicator to work uh, so that potentially we have an alternative for the fire starter. And I want to optimize the fire starter even further. So far it's good, but it can be even a bit better. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy the content of Battletech, leave a comment down uh, below. Today's question is, what's your favorite medium Mac and why? And uh, we are going to see each other in the next episode. Take care and goodbye.